there and ready uh, to oppose them and do everything we can to stop that amendment. So what does it mean for some of our other issues? I don't want us to lose sight of the fact the amendment's kind of this huge thing <coughs> looming out there and kind of uh, can suck up a lot of attention, but we can't lose sight of some of the other things that we've been working on. Uh, passing the School Violence Prevention Act, passing the Healthy Youth Act, getting additional funding for HIV AIDS prevention and care. Um, these are victories over the last few years that we are going to have to defend. Um, we have heard a Representative Stam say that he wants to repeal the School Violence Prevention Act. Um, we anticipate that there may be a move uh, to undo comprehensive sex education. And again, when they're looking for uh, $3.6 billion in cuts, we have to make sure that uh, life-saving medication for low-income people with HIV AIDS is not on the chopping block. Um, we have some advantages on this. Um, first of all, I think the climate on anti-bullying legislation is even more positive now than it was when we passed it in 2009. Um, with all of the attention this issue has been getting nationally, um, I think we will see even some people who may not have voted for it originally who would oppose attempts to repeal it. Um, we also have Governor Perdue who signed the bill, who supports the anti-bullying legislation, who we will be calling on and counting on to veto this legislation if it were to get to her. Um, and, and likewise for the Healthy Youth Act. Um, on HIV AIDS prevention and care funding, um, this is a bipartisan issue. Um, this is not something that is just a democratic issue. In the U.S. Senate, uh, the, probably one of the foremost champions of funding for the AIDS Drug Assistance Program is actually Senator Richard Burr. And we will certainly be reminding some of our local Republicans that this is not a partisan issue and that they uh, need to stand up for low-income people living with HIV. Um, and North Carolina AIDS Action Network and all of our partners there are going to be really critical in leading the effort on that. So we're going to fight, face some tough attacks, um, some attempts to roll back the progress that we've made. But I truly believe that if we do our homework, if we keep pushing all of our legislators in both parties, uh, if we keep holding Governor Perdue accountable, that we will be able to stop uh, these attacks on our community. Um, so we have to keep working on them, even as we're fighting this constitutional amendment uh, whenever it does come up. As many of you know, um, after passing the School Violence Prevention Act last year, Equality North Carolina shifted our focus to working on non-discrimination and employment, housing, and public accommodations. And we've been laying groundwork to work on those, those bills. Um, our timeline has changed. Uh, we do not anticipate seeing forward movement on that in the upcoming legislative session. But that does not mean that we stop doing work to move forward as a community. Uh, it means that we keep educating, that we keep building support from legislators, that we keep getting our corporate allies who have these good policies in place in their businesses to speak up and stand up for legislation on this statewide, and that we work with local governments uh, to pass policies that protect their own employees to keep building the momentum. So even though we face a much, much tougher uh, environment in the state legislature, it doesn't mean that we can stop moving forward because we know that the pendulum is going to swing back at some point in the next few years. And we will have that opportunity again if we've done our homework and if we're ready and if we've gotten everything lined up so that when we have that opportunity again, we are ready to go. And Equality North Carolina is not going to uh, set that issue of winning comprehensive non-discrimination protections aside just because the climate has changed for the next couple of years. Um, and we're going to be asking all of you to work with us on that as well. So what does all that mean um, for the way forward? Um, you know, it means that our strategies are, are changing and some of them are staying the same. Um, we're going to work harder than ever before to engage moderate Republicans on our issues. Um, but that's not to say that we haven't been doing this work already. Equality North Carolina has always believed that equality is not a partisan issue. Um, that uh, there are Republicans who we can work with uh, who can support us. Uh, and there have been Republicans that have helped us in different ways over the past years. We have to find more of them, and we have to engage them more than ever before. Um, 
One of the ways that we're doing that is with our bipartisan board. Um, our uh, 501c4's board chair, uh, Dan Gurley, is actually the former executive director of the state Republican Party. Um, we have other Republicans involved in our work um, who can help us build relationships with some of these people who are gonna be making decisions that are really life or death for our community. Um, we also have to push the Democratic Caucus to hold fast and to stand up and stand united in opposition to attacks on our community. The Democratic Caucus in our state legislature has never been a, a, a fully progressive or a fully pro-equality caucus. And we're gonna have to push to try and line up as many of those folks as we can to stand with us. Um, we're gonna be working uh, with uh, Representative Brandon uh, to educate folks uh, to engage the Black Caucus in our, uh, our work for full equality uh, and to try and get Democrats to stand united and do whatever they can to block these attempts uh, at attacking our lives and our families from moving through. One of the things that is not changing is that we still believe the most powerful tool that each of us has individually is telling our stories. Um, when we talk to people in our community, when we talk to the media, and when we talk to legislators, when we put a face on our issues, when we get them to understand who we are, what our lives actually look like, and the impact that these kinds of bills actually have on our lives, and particularly on the lives of LGBT young people. You know, with the, the recent uh, suicides that have been getting so much attention in the year, in, in the last few months, uh, that we know are just scratching the surface of what LGBT young people are facing in middle school and high school and college today, to have the government on record advancing anti-equality positions um, sends a really horrible message and I think contributes to the climate that enables bullies um, and that enables uh, some really difficult situations for LGBT young people. We need to get North Carolina to understand the real harm that these kinds of policies would have on our lives. And I think that is truly our most powerful message. And the way we do that is by telling our personal stories and telling the stories of people we know and love. We have to engage and inform voters across the state. You know, the LGBT community is never gonna be a majority on our own. We have to engage our straight allies and we have to engage people who vote and people who will take action. And, you know, we've, this is something we've been committed to and doing for a long time now as well. We have to build really strong coalitions. This work is not going to be Equality North Carolina on our own. We had an amazing coalition of organizations working together on the School Violence Prevention Act and on the Healthy Youth Act and on HIV AIDS. And we're going to be working with those same folks and more to defend those victories. And we're going to be building a new, stronger coalition to fight the attack um, on our community through the Marriage Discrimination Constitutional Amendment. Um, and that's not just statewide organizations, that's not, not just national organizations. We need people like you to help us engage local groups in your communities who can be strong allies and who can engage on these issues and can help us provide another voice. Um, as we have a less receptive legislature, it's so important that we're there and we're telling our stories, but it's equally important that they're hearing from people who maybe they identify with a little bit more than they do the LGBT community, that they're hearing from parents, that they're hearing from business people, that they're hearing from straight allies, that they're hearing from faith leaders. And we really need to enlist every one of you in making that happen and getting those kinds of uh, leaders and organizations involved in the fight. Um, so we can't do this alone. Um, and at this point, I'm going to ask our volunteers uh, to pass out. We have uh, some pink uh, pledge forms. And we're not necessarily asking you to pledge money today. We're asking you to pledge your time. And we're asking you to pledge your action. Um, I need everybody here in this room today to commit to helping us fight the constitutional amendment in the legislature helping us preserve the School Violence Prevention Act and keep our schools safer for LGBT young people, to fight any other attacks on the LGBT community and our families. Because we're gonna have to work harder than we ever have, and we're gonna have to engage more people than we ever have in our fight. 
Um, I want each of you.